Chapter 8 Another Man's Wife or The Husband Under the Bed An Extraordinary Adventure Ivan Andreyevich felt that he had come to the wrong place, that he had made a silly, childish blunder, that he had acted without due consideration, that he had not been sufficiently cautious on the landing. But there was no help for it. The door was already opening, already the heavy husband, that is, if he could be judged by his footsteps, was coming into the room. I don't know what Ivan Andreyevich took himself to be at that moment. I don't know what prevented him from confronting the husband, telling him that he had made a mistake, confessing that he had unintentionally behaved in the most unseemly way, making his apologies and vanishing. Not, of course, with flying colors, not, of course, with glory, but at any rate departing in an open and gentlemanly manner. But no. Ivan Andreyevich again behaved like a boy, as though he considered himself a Don Juan or a Lovelace. He first hid himself behind the curtain of the bed, and finally, feeling utterly dejected and hopeless, he dropped on the floor and senselessly crept under the bed. Terror had more influence on him than reason, and Ivan Andreyevich, himself an injured husband, or at any rate a husband, who considered himself such, could not face meeting another husband, but was afraid to wound him by his presence. Be this as it may, he found himself under the bed, though he had no idea how it had come to pass. But what was more surprising, the lady made no opposition. She did not cry out on seeing an utterly unknown elderly gentleman seek a refuge under her bed. Probably she was so alarmed that she was deprived of all power of speech. The husband walked in, gasping and clearing his throat, said good evening to his wife in a sing-song elderly voice, and flopped into an easy chair as though he had just been carrying up a load of wood. There was a sound of a hollow and prolonged cough. Ivan Andreyevich transformed from a ferocious tiger to a lamb, timid and meek as a mouse before a cat scarcely dared to breathe for terror though he might have known from his own experience that not all injured husbands bite but this idea did not enter his head either from lack of consideration or from agitation of some sort cautiously softly feeling his way he began to get right under the bed so as to lie more comfortably there what was his amazement when with his hand he felt an object which to his intense amazement, stirred, and in its turn seized his hand. Under the bed there was another person. Who's this? whispered Ivan Andreyevich. Well, I am not likely to tell you who I am, whispered the strange man. Lie still and keep quiet if you have made a mess of things. But I say, hold your tongue and the extra gentleman, for one was quite enough under the bed. The extra gentleman squeezed Ivan Andreyevich's hand in his fist so that the latter almost shrieked with pain. My dear sir, shh, then don't pinch me so or I shall scream. Oh, right, scream away, try it on. Ivan Andreyevich flushed with shame. The unknown gentleman was sulky and ill-humored Perhaps it was a man who had suffered more than once from the persecutions of fate and had more than once been in a tight place. But Ivan Andreyevich was a novice and could not breathe in his constricted position. The blood rushed to his head. However, there was no help for it. He had to lie on his face. Ivan Andreyevich submitted and was silent. I have been to see Pavel Ivanitch, my love, began the husband. We sat down to a game of preference. <laughs> he had a fit of coughing. Yes, <laughs> so my back will <laughs> bother it. <laughs> the old gentleman became engrossed in his cough. My back, he brought out at last with tears in his eyes. My spine began to ache. Damn hemorrhoid. I can't stand nor sit or sit. <laughs> 
and it seemed as though the cough that followed was designed to last longer than the old gentleman in possession of it. The old gentleman grumbled something in its intervals, but it was utterly impossible to make out a word. Dear sir, for goodness sake, move a little, whispered the unhappy Ivan Andreevich. How can I? There's no room. But you must admit that it is impossible for me. It is the first time that I have found myself in such a nasty position. And I in such unpleasant society. But, young man, hold your tongue. Hold my tongue? You are a very uncivil young man. If I am not mistaken, you are very young. I am your senior. Hold your tongue. My dear sir, you are forgetting yourself. You don't know to whom you are talking. To a gentleman lying under the bed. But I was taken by surprise, a mistake. While in your case, if I am not mistaken, immorality, that's where you are mistaken. My dear sir, I am older than you, I tell you. Sir, we are in the same boat, you know. I beg you not to take hold of my face. Sir. I can't tell one thing from another. Excuse me, but I have no room. You shouldn't be so fat. Heavens, I have never been in such a degrading position. Yes, one couldn't be brought more low. Sir, sir, I don't know who you are. I don't understand how this came about. But I am here by mistake. I am not what you think. I shouldn't think about you at all if you didn't shove. But hold your tongue, do, sir. If you don't move a little, I shall have a stroke. You will have to answer for my death. I assure you, I am a respectable man. I am the father of a family. I really cannot be in such a position. You thrust yourself into the position. Come, move a little. I've made room for you. I can't do more. Noble young man, dear sir, I see I was mistaken about you said Ivan Andreevich in a transport of gratitude for the space allowed him and stretching out his cramped limbs. I understand your constricted condition, but there's no help for it. I see you think ill of me. Allow me to redeem my reputation in your eyes. Allow me to tell you who I am. I have come here against my will. I assure you, I am not here with the object you imagine. I am in a terrible fright. Oh, do shut up. Understand that if we are overheard, it will be the worst for us. Shh, he is talking. The old gentleman's cough did, in fact, seem to be over. I tell you what, my love, he wheezed in the most lachrymose chin. I tell you what, my love. <coughs> oh, what an affliction, Fedosey Ivanovich said to me. You? should try drinking yarrow tea, he said to me. Do you hear, my love? Yes, dear, yes, that is what he said. You should try drinking yarrow tea, he said. I told him I had put on leeches, but he said, No, Alexander Demianovich, your tea is better. It's a laxative, I tell you. <coughs> Oh, dear, what do you think, my love? <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> How'd I better try yarrow tea? <laughs> oh, <laughs> and so on. I think it would be just as well to try that remedy, said his wife. Yes, it would be. You may be in consumption, he said. <laughs> I told him it was gout and irritability of the stomach. <laughs> but he would have it that it might be consumption. What do you think? <laughs> what do you think, my love? Is it consumption? My goodness, what are you talking about? Why, consumption? You had better undress and go to bed now, my love. I've caught a cold in my head today, oh, said Ivan Andreevich. For God's sake, do move a little. I really don't know what is the matter with you. Can't you lie still? 
you are exasperated against me, young man. You want to wound me. I see that. You are, I suppose, this lady's lover. Shut up. I will not shut up. I won't allow you to order me about. You are, no doubt, her lover. If we are discovered, I am not to blame in any way. I know nothing about it. If you don't hold your tongue, said the young man, grinding his teeth, I will say that you brought me here. I'll say that you are my uncle who has dissipated his fortune. Then they won't imagine I am this lady's lover anyway. Sir, you are amusing yourself at my expense. You are exhausting my patience. Hush, or I will make you hush. You are a curse to me. Come, tell me what you are here for. If you were not here, I could lie here somehow till morning and then get away. But I can't lie here till morning. I am a respectable man. I have family ties, of course. What do you think? Surely he is not going to spend the night here. Who? Why, this old gentleman. Of course he will. All husbands aren't like you. Some of them spend their nights at home. My dear sir, my dear sir, cried Ivan Andreevich, turning cold with terror. I assure you I spend my nights at home too, and this is the first time, but by God I see you know me. Who are you, young man? Tell me at once, I beseech you, from disinterested friendship. Who are you? Listen, I shall resort to violence. But allow me, allow me, sir, to tell you, allow me to explain all this horrid business. I won't listen to any explanation. I don't want to know anything about it. Be silent or... But I cannot. A slight skirmish took place under the bed and Ivan Andreevich subsided. My love, it sounds as though there were cats hissing. Cats? What will you imagine next? Evidently, the lady did not know what to talk to her husband about. She was so upset that she could not pull herself together. Now she started and pricked up her ears. What cats? Cats, my love. The other day, I went into my study, and there was the tomcat in my study. And he said, shoo, shoo, shoo. I said to him, what is it, pussy? And he went, shoo, 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 again, as though he were whispering. I thought, merciful heavens, isn't he hissing as a sign of my death? What nonsense are you talking today? You ought to be ashamed, really. Never mind. Don't be cross, my love. I see you don't like to think of me, darling. I didn't mean it, but you had better undress and get to bed, my love, and I'll sit here while you go to bed. For goodness sakes, leave off afterwards. Well, don't be cross, so be cross, but really I think there must be mice here. Why, first cats and then mice? I really don't know what is the matter with you. Oh, I'm all right. <coughs> I, uh, uh, never mind. <laughs> oh, look, have mercy on me. <laughs> you hear? You are making such an upset that he hears you, whispers the young man. But if you knew what is happening to me, my nose is bleeding. Let it bleed. Shut up. Wait till he goes away. But, young man, put yourself in my place. Why, I don't know with whom I am lying. Would you be better off if you did? Why, I don't want to know your name. By the way, what is your name? No, what do you want with my name? I only want to explain the senseless way in which I is speaking again. Really, my love, there is whispering. Oh, no, it's the cotton wool in your ears has got out of place. Oh, by the way, talking of the cotton wool, do you know that upstairs? <laughs> upstairs. <coughs> and so on. Upstairs, whispered the young man. Oh, the devil. I thought that this was the top story. Can it be the second? Young man, whispered Ivan Andreevich. What did you say? 
for goodness sakes, why does it concern you? I thought it was the top story too. Tell me, for God's sake, is there another story? Really, someone is stirring, said the old man, leaving off coughing at last. Hush, do you hear? whispered the young man, squeezing Ivan Andreyitch's hands. Sir, you are holding my hands by force. Let me go. Hush. A slight struggle followed, and then there was a silence again. So I met a pretty woman, began the old man. A pretty woman, interrupted his wife. Yes. I thought I told you before that I met a pretty woman on the stairs, or perhaps I did not mention it. My memory is weak. Yes, St. John's Wort. <coughs> what? I must drink St. John's Wort. They say it does good. <coughs> it does good. It was you interrupted him, said the young man, grinding his teeth again. You said you met some pretty woman today? His wife went on. I met a pretty woman. Who did? Why didn't you? I? When? Oh, yes. At last. What a moment. Well, whispered the young man, inwardly raging at the forgetful old gentleman. My dear sir, I am trembling with horror. My God, what do I hear? It's like yesterday exactly like yesterday hush yes to be sure i remember a sly puss such eyes in a blue hat in a blue hat i i it's she she has a blue hat my god cried ivan andreyitch she who is she whispered the young man, squeezing Ivan Andreyitch's hands. Hush, Ivan Andreyitch exhorted in his turn. He is speaking. Oh, my God, my God. Though, after all, who hasn't a blue hat? And so, just like little rogue, the old gentleman went on. She comes here to see friends. She's always making eyes. And other friends come to see those friends, too. Phew, how tedious. The lady interrupted. Really, how can you take interest in that? Oh, very well, very well. Don't be cross, the old gentleman responded in a wheedling chant. I won't talk if you don't care to hear me. You seem a little out of humor this evening. But how did you get here? The young man began. I, you see, you see, now you are interested and before you wouldn't listen. Oh, well, I don't care. Please don't tell me. Oh, damnation, take it. What a mess. Don't be cross, young man. I don't know what I am saying. I didn't mean anything. I only meant to say that there must be some good reason for your taking such an interest. But who are you, young man? I see you are a stranger. But who are you? Oh, dear, I don't know what I'm saying. Oh, leave off, please, the young man interrupted as though he were considering something. But I will tell you all about it. You think perhaps that I will not tell you that I feel resentment against you. Oh, no, here is my hand. I am only feeling depressed, nothing more. But for God's sake, first tell me how you came here yourself. Through what chance? As for me, I feel no ill will. No, indeed, I feel no ill will. Here is my hand. I have made it rather dirty. It is so dusty here, but that's nothing. When the feeling is true. Ah, oh, get away with your hand. There is no room to turn, and he keeps thrusting his hand on me. But, my dear sir, but you treat me, if you will allow me to say so, as though I were an old shoe said Ivan Andreyitch in a rush of the meekest despair, in a voice full of entreaty. Treat me a little more civilly, just a little more civilly, and I will tell you all about it. We might be friends. I'm quite ready to ask you home to dinner. We can't lie here side by side like this. I tell you plainly, you are in error, young man. You do not know. When was it he met her? The young man muttered. 
evidently in violent emotion. Perhaps she's expecting me now. I'll certainly get away from here. She? Who is she? My God, of whom are you speaking, young man? You imagine that upstairs... My God, my God, why am I punished like this? Ivan Andreevich tried to turn on his back in his despair. Why do you want to know who she is? Oh, the devil, whether it was she or not, I will get out. My dear sir, what are you thinking about? What will become of me? whispered Ivan Andreevich, clutching at the tails of his neighbor's dress coat in his despair. Well, what's that to me? You can stop here by yourself, and if you won't, I'll tell them that you are my uncle, who has squandered all his property, so that the old gentleman won't think that I am his wife's lover. But that is utterly impossible, young man. It's unnatural I should be your uncle. Nobody would believe you. Why, a baby wouldn't believe it. Ivan Andreevich whispered in despair. Well, don't battle then, but lie as flat as a pancake. Most likely you will stay the night here and get out somehow tomorrow. No one will notice you. If one creeps out, it is not likely they would think there was another one here. There might as well be a dozen, though you are as good as a dozen by yourself. Move a little, or I'll get out. You wound me, young man. What if I have a fit of coughing? One has to think of everything. Hush. What's that? I fancy I hear something going on upstairs again, said the old gentleman, who seemed to have had a nap in the interval. Upstairs? Do you hear, young man? I shall get out. Well, I hear. My goodness, young man, I am going. Oh, well. I am not, then. I don't care. If there is an upset, I don't mind. But do you know what I suspect? I believe you are an injured husband. So there. Good heavens, what cynicism. Can you possibly suspect that? Why, a husband? I am not married. Not married, fiddlesticks. I may be a lover myself. A nice lover. My dear sir. My dear sir. Oh, very well. I will tell you the whole story. Listen to my desperate story. It is not a... I am not married. I am a bachelor like you. It is my friend, a companion of my youth. I am a lover. He told me that he was an unhappy man. I am drinking the cup of bitterness, he said. I suspect my wife. Well, I said to him reasonably, why do you suspect her? But you are not listening to me. Listen, listen. Jealousy is ridiculous, I said to him. Jealousy is a vice. No, he said, I am an unhappy man. I am drinking. That is, I suspect my wife. You are my friend, I said. You are the companion of my tender youth. Together we cull the flowers of happiness. Together we rolled in feather beds of pleasure. My goodness, I don't know what I am saying. You keep laughing, young man. You drive me crazy. But you are crazy now. There, I knew you would say that when I talked of being crazy. Laugh away, laugh away, young man. I did the same in my day. I too went astray. I shall have inflammation of the brain. What is it, my love? I thought I heard someone sneeze. The old man chanted. Was that you sneeze, my love? Oh, my goodness, said his wife. Shh, sounded from under the bed. They must be making a noise upstairs, said his wife, alarmed. For there was certainly a noise under the bed. Yes, upstairs, said the husband. Upstairs, I told you just now, I met a that I met a young swell with moustaches. Oh, dear, my spine. A young swell with moustaches. With moustaches? My goodness. That must have been you, whispered Ivan Andreevich. Merciful heavens, what a man. Why, I am here, lying here with you. How could he have met me? But don't take hold of my face. My goodness, I shall faint in a minute. 
There certainly was a loud noise overhead at this moment. What can be happening there? whispered the young man. My dear sir, I am in alarm. I am in terror. Help me. Hush. There really is a noise, my love. There's a regular hubbub. And just over your bedroom, too. Hadn't I better send up to inquire? Well, what will you think of next? Oh, well, I won't. But really, how cross you are today. Oh, dear, you had better go to bed. Liza, you don't love me at all. Oh, yes, I do, for goodness sakes. I am so tired. Well, well, I am going. Oh, no, no, don't go, cried his wife. Or no, better go. Why, what is the matter with you? One minute I am to go, and the next I'm not. <laughs> it really is bedtime. <laughs> The Panavidin's little girl, <coughs> their little girl, <coughs> I saw their little girl's Nuremberg doll. <coughs> well, now it's dolls? <coughs> A pretty doll. <coughs> he is saying goodbye, said the young man. He is going, and we can get away at once, do you hear? You can rejoice. Oh, God, grant it. It's a lesson to you made a lesson for what i feel it but you are young you cannot teach me i will though listen oh dear i'm going to sneeze i should you dare but what can i do there is such a smell of mice here can't help it take my handkerchief out of my pocket i can't stir oh my god my god why am i so punished here's your handkerchief I will tell you what you are punished for. You are jealous. Goodness knows on what grounds. You rush about like a madman, burst into other people's flats, create a disturbance. Young man, I have not created disturbance. Hush, young man, you can't lecture to me about morals. I am more moral than you. Hush. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. You create a disturbance. You frighten a young lady. A timid woman who does not know what to do for terror and perhaps will be ill. You disturb a venerable old man suffering from a complaint and who needs repose above everything. And all this what for? Because you imagine some nonsense which sets you running all over the neighborhood? Do understand what a hard position you are in now? I do very well, sir. I feel it, but... You have not the right. Hold your tongue. What has right got to do with it? Do you understand that this may have a tragic ending? Do you understand that the old man, who is fond of his wife, may go out of his mind when he sees you creep out from under the bed? But no, you are incapable of causing a tragedy. When you crawl out, I expect everyone who looks at you will laugh. I should like to see you in the light. You must look funny. And you, you must be funny too. In that case, I should like to have a look at you too. I dare say you would. You must carry the stamp of immorality, young man. Ah, you are talking about morals. How do you know why I'm here? I am here by mistake. I made a mistake in the story. And the deuce knows why they let me in. I suppose she must have been expecting someone. Not you, of course. I hid under the bed when I heard your stupid footsteps. When I saw the lady was frightened. Besides, it was dark. And why should I justify myself to you? You are a ridiculous, jealous old man, sir. Do you know why I don't crawl out? Perhaps you imagine I am afraid to come out. No, sir. I should have come out long ago, but I stay here from compassion for you. Why, what would you be taken for if I were not here? You'd stand facing them like a post. You know you wouldn't know what to do. Why, like that object? Couldn't you find anything else to compare me with, young man? Why shouldn't I know what to do? I should know what to do. Oh, my goodness, how that wretched dog keeps barking. Hush! Oh, it really is. That's because you keep jabbering. You've wake the dog. Now there'll be trouble. The lady's dog, who had till then been sleeping on a pillow in the corner, suddenly awoke, sniffed strangers, and rushed under the bed with a loud bark. Oh, my God, what a sweet dog! 
whispered Ivan Andreyitch. It will get us into trouble. Here's another affliction. Oh, well, you are such a coward that it may well be so. Ami, Ami, come here, cried the lady. Ici, ici. But the doll, without heeding her, made straight for Ivan Andreyitch. Why is it Amishka keeps barking? said the old gentleman. There must be mice or the cat under there. I seem to hear a sneezing, and Pussy had a cold this morning. Lie still, whispered the young man. Don't twist about. Perhaps it will leave off. Sir, let go of my hand, sir. Why are you holding them? Hush, be quiet. But mercy on us, young man. It will bite my nose. Do you want me to lose my nose? A struggle followed, and Ivan Andreyitch got his hands free. The dog broke into volleys of barking. Suddenly it ceased barking and gave a yelp. Ah! cried the lady. Monster, what are you doing? cried the young man. You will be the ruin of us both. Why are you holding it? Good heavens, he is strangling it. Let it go. Monster, you know nothing of the heart of women. If you can do that, she will betray us both. If you strangle the dog... But by now Ivan Andreyitch could hear nothing. He had succeeded in catching the dog, and in a paroxysm of self-preservation had squeezed his throat. The dog yelled and gave up the ghost. We are lost, whispered the young man. Amishka, Amishka, cried the lady. My God, what are they doing with my Amishka, 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 Missy? Oh, the monsters! Barbarians, oh dear, I feel giddy. What is it? What is it? cried the old gentleman, jumping up from his easy chair. What is the matter with you, my darling? Amishka, here, Amishka, 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 cried the old gentleman, snapping with his fingers and clicking with his tongue and calling Amishka from under the bed. Amishka, Isi, Isi. The cat cannot have eaten him. The cat wants a thrashing, my love. He hasn't had a beating for a whole month, the rogue. What do you think? I'll talk to Praskovia Zaharievna. But my goodness, what is the matter, my love? Why, what you are? Oh, oh, servants, servants. And the old gentleman ran about the room. Villains, monsters, cried the lady, sinking on the sofa. Who? 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 cried the old gentleman. There are people there, strangers. They are under the bed. Oh, my God. Amishka, Amishka, what have they done to you? Good heavens, what people? Amishka, servants, servants, come here. Who is, who is there? Who is there? cried the old gentleman, snatching up a candle and bending down under the bed. Who is there? Ivan Andreyitch was lying more dead than alive beside the breathless corpse of Amishka. But the young man was watching every movement of the old gentleman. All at once the old gentleman went to the other side of the bed by the wall and bent down. In a flash, the young man crept out from under the bed and took to his heels, while the husband was looking for his visitors on the other side. Good gracious! exclaimed the lady, staring at the young man. Who are you? Why, I thought... That monster's still there, whispered the young man. He is guilty of Amishka's death. What? shrieked the lady, but the young man had already vanished from the room. Aye, there is someone here. Here are someone's boots, cried the husband, catching Ivan Andreyitch by the leg. Murderer! Murderer, cried the lady. Oh, Ami, Ami, come out, come out, cried the old gentleman, stamping on the carpet with both feet. Come out, who are you? Tell me who you are. Good gracious, what a queer person. Why, it's robbers. For God's sake, for God's sake, cried Ivan Andreyitch, creeping out. For God's sake, your excellency, don't call the servants. Your excellency, don't call anyone. It is quite unnecessary. You can't kick me out. I am not that sort of person. I am a different case. Your excellency, it has all been due to a mistake. I'll explain directly, your excellency, exclaimed Ivan Andreevich, 
sobbing and gasping. It's all my wife. That is not my wife, but somebody else's wife. I am not married. I am only... It's my comrade, a friend of youthful days. What friend of youthful days? cried the old gentleman, stamping. You are a thief. You have come to steal and not a friend of youthful days. No, I am not a thief, Your Excellency. I am really a friend of youthful days. I have only blundered by accident. I came into the wrong place. Yes, sir. Yes. I see from what place you've crawled out. Your Excellency, I am not that sort of man. You are mistaken. I tell you, you are cruelly mistaken. Your Excellency, only glance at me, look at me, and by signs and tokens you will see that I can't be a thief. Your Excellency, Your Excellency, cried Ivan Andreevich folding his hands and appealing to the young lady. You are a lady. You will understand me. It was I who killed the Mishka, but it was not my fault. It was really not my fault. It was all my wife's fault. I am an unhappy man. I am drinking the cup of bitterness. But really, what has it to do with me that you are drinking the cup of bitterness? Perhaps it's not the only cup you've drunk. It seems so to judge from your condition. But how did you come here, sir? cried the old man, quivering with excitement, though he certainly was convinced by certain signs and tokens that Ivan Andreevich could not be a thief. I ask you, how did you come here? You break in like a robber? Not a robber, Your Excellency. I simply came to the wrong place. I am really not a robber. It is all because I was jealous. I will tell you all about it, Your Excellency. I will confess it all frankly, as I would to my own father. For at your venerable age, I might take you for a father. What do you mean, my venerable age? Your Excellency, perhaps I have offended you. Of course, such a young lady and your age. It is a pleasant sight, Your Excellency. It really is a pleasant sight, such a union in the prime of life. But don't call the servants, for God's sake, don't call the servants. Servants would only laugh. I know them, that is. I don't mean that I am only acquainted with footmen. I have a footman of my own, Your Excellency, and they are always laughing at the asses. Your Highness, I believe I am not mistaken. I am addressing a prince. No, I am not a prince, sir. I am an independent gentleman. Please do not flatter me with Your Highness. How did you get here, sir? How did you get here? Your Highness, that is Your Excellency. Excuse me, I thought that you were Your Highness. I looked, I imagined, it does happen. You are so like Prince Korokohov, whom I have had the honor of meeting at my friend, Mr. Pusiris. You see, I am acquainted with princes, too. I have met princes, too, at the houses of my friends. You cannot take me for what you take me for. I am not a thief, Your Excellency. Don't call the servants. What will be the good of it if you do call them? But how did you come here? cried the lady. Who are you? Yes, who are you? The husband chimed in. And, my love, I thought it was pussy under the bed sneezing. And it was he. Ah, you vagabond. Who are you? Tell me. And the old gentleman stamped on the carpet again. I cannot speak, Your Excellency. I am waiting till you are finished. I am enjoying your witty jokes. As regards me, it is an absurd story, Your Excellency. I will tell you all about it. It can all be explained without more ado. That is, I mean, don't call the servants, Your Excellency. Treat me in a gentlemanly way. It means nothing that I was under the bed. I have not sacrificed my dignity by that. It is a most comical story, Your Excellency, cried Ivan Andreevich, addressing the lady with a supplicating air. 
you particularly your excellency will laugh you behold upon the scene a jealous husband you see i have based myself i have based myself of my own free will i did indeed kill emishka but my god i don't know what i'm saying but how how did you get here under cover of night your excellency under cover of night i beg your pardon forgive me your excellency i humbly beg your pardon i am only an injured husband nothing more don't imagine your excellency that i am a lover i am not a lover your wife is virtue itself if i may venture so to express myself she is pure and innocent what 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 did you have the audacity to say cried the old gentleman stamping his foot again are you out of your mind or not how dare you talk about my wife is the villain a murderer who has killed a mishka wailed the lady dissolving into tears and then he dares your excellency your excellency i spoke foolishly cried ivan andreitch in a fluster i was talking foolishly that was all think of me as out of my mind for goodness sakes think of me as out of my mind i assure you that you will be doing me the greatest favour i would offer you my hand but i do not venture to i was not alone i was an uncle i mean to say that you cannot take me for the lover goodness i have put my foot in it again do not be offended your excellency cried ivan andreitch to the lady you are a lady you understand what love is it is a delicate feeling but what am i saying i am talking nonsense again that is i mean to say that i am an old man that is a middle-aged man not an old man that i cannot be your lover that a lover is a richardson that is a lovelace i am talking nonsense but you see your excellency that i am a well-educated man and know something of literature you are laughing your excellency i am delighted delighted that i have provoked your mirth your excellency oh how delighted i am that i have provoked your mirth <laughs> oh, my goodness what a funny man cried the lady exploding with laughter yes he is funny and in such a mess said the old man delighted that his wife was laughing he cannot be a thief my love but how did he come here it really is strange it really is strange it is like a novel what at the dead of night in a great city a man under a bed strange funny rinaldo rinaldini after a fashion but that is no matter no matter your excellency i will tell you all about it and i will buy you a new lap dog your excellency a wonderful lap dog such a long coat such short little legs it can't walk more than a step or two it runs a little gets entangled in its own coat and tumbles over one feeds it on nothing but sugar i will bring you one i will certainly bring you one <laughs> the lady was rolling from side to side with laughter oh dear i shall have hysterics oh how funny he is yes yes <laughs> he is funny and he is in a mess <laughs> your excellency your excellency i am now perfectly happy i would offer you my hand but i do not venture to your excellency i feel that i have been in error but now i am opening my eyes i am certain my wife is pure and innocent i was wrong in suspecting her why his wife cried the lady with tears in her eyes through laughing he married impossible i should never have thought it said the old gentleman your excellency my wife it is all her fault that is it is my fault i suspected her i knew that an assignation had been arranged here here upstairs i intercepted a letter made a mistake about the story and got under the bed 
ha 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 Ivan Andreyevich began laughing at last. Oh, how happy I am! Oh, how wonderful to see that we are all so happy and harmonious, and my wife is entirely innocent. That must be so, Your Excellency. <laughs> Do you know, my love, who it was? said the old man at last, recovering from his mirth. Who? <laughs> she must be the pretty woman who makes eyes, the one with the dandy. It's she. I bet that's his wife. No, Your Excellency, I am certain it is not she. I am perfectly certain. But my goodness, you are losing time, cried the lady, leaving off laughing. Run, go upstairs. Perhaps you will find them. Certainly, Your Excellency, I will fly. But I shall not find anyone, Your Excellency. It is not she. I am certain of it beforehand. She is at home now. It is all my fault. It is simply my jealousy, nothing else. What do you think? Do you suppose that I shall find them there, Your Excellency? Ha, ha, ha. <laughs> you must go, you must go. And when you come down, come in and tell us, cried the lady. Or better still, tomorrow morning. And do bring her too. I should like to make her acquaintance. Goodbye, Your Excellency, goodbye. I will certainly bring her. I shall be very glad for her to make your acquaintance. I am glad and happy that it was all ended so and has turned out for the best. And the lapdog, don't forget it. Be sure to bring the lapdog. I will bring it, Your Excellency. I will certainly bring it, responded Ivan Andreyitch, darting back into the room, for he had already made his bows and withdrawn. I will certainly bring it. It is such a pretty one. It is just as though a confectioner had made it of sweet meats. And it's such a funny little thing. Gets entangled in its own coat and falls over. It really is a lapdog. I said to my wife, How is it, my love? It keeps tumbling over. It is such a little thing, she said, as though it were made of sugar. Of sugar, Your Excellency. Goodbye, Your Excellency. Very, very glad to make your acquaintance. Very glad to make your acquaintance. Ivan Andreyevich bowed himself out. Hey, sir, stay, come back, cried the old gentleman after the retreating Ivan Andreyevich. The latter turned back for the third time. I still can't find the cat. Didn't you meet him when you were under the bed? No, I didn't, Your Excellency. Very glad to make his acquaintance, though, and I shall look upon it as an honor. He has a cold in his head now and keeps sneezing and sneezing. He must have a beating. Yes, Your Excellency, of course, corrective punishment is essential with domestic animals. What? I say that corrective punishment is necessary, Your Excellency, to enforce obedience in the domestic animals. Ah, well, goodbye. Goodbye. That is all I had to say. Coming out into the street, Ivan Andreyevich stood for a long time in an attitude that suggested that he was expecting to have a fit in another minute. He took off his hat, wiped the cold sweat from his brow, screwed up his eyes, thought a minute, and set off homeward. What was his amazement when he learned at home that Glafira Petrovna had come back from the theater a long, long time before, that she had a toothache, that she had sent for the doctor, that she had sent for leeches, and that now she was lying in bed and expecting Ivan Andreyevich. Ivan Andreyevich slapped himself on the forehead, told the servant to help him wash and to brush his clothes, and at last ventured to go into his wife's room. Where is it you spend your time? Look what a sight you are. What do you look like? Where have you been lost all this time? Upon my word, sir, your wife is dying and you have to be hunted for all over town. Where have you been? Surely you have not been tracking me, trying to disturb a rendezvous I am supposed to have made, though I don't know with whom. For shame, sir, you are a husband. People will soon be pointing at you in the street. My love. 
responded Ivan Andreyitch. But at this point he was so overcome with confusion that he had to feel in his pocket for his handkerchief and to break off in the speech he was beginning because he had neither words, thoughts, or courage. What was his amazement, horror, and alarm when with his handkerchief fell out of his pocket the corpse of Amishka? Ivan Andreyitch had not noticed that when he had been forced to creep out from under the bed in an excess of despair and unreasoning terror, he had stuffed Amishka into his pocket with a faraway idea of burying the traces, concealing the evidence of his crime, and so avoiding the punishment he deserved. What's this? cried his spouse. A nasty dead dog. Goodness, where has it come from? What have you been up to? Where have you been? Tell me at once, where have you been? My love, answered Ivan Andreyitch, almost as dead as Amishka. My love, but here we will leave our hero till another time, for a new and quite different adventure begins here. Some day we will describe all these calamities and misfortunes, gentlemen. But you will admit that jealousy is an unpardonable passion, and what is more, it is a positive misfortune. End of chapter 8